hitter show, I call it, and I think we're about to all be exposed to something that if we're not diabetic ourselves or on our way to becoming one, we certainly know one or numbers of them. It's been about three years ago now uh, since on my radio show, I had a guest. I'll never forget his name. His name is Tom Smith. Tom Smith, uh, in a similar but not exactly similar fashion, learned that he was a diabetic and uh, was not too happy when his doctors told him that he would have to be on medicine for the rest of his life. In any other group of people, this seems to be just understood to be so, but there's something with you engineers. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Something's with these engineers because it didn't sit well with Tom. And Tom just went home and said, no, I can fix this. And so he told me three years ago that he went and applied what he learned in engineering school and what he used every day as an engineering job to go ahead and find out how to fix that disease, which he certainly did it himself. He told that story on our radio show. He came out with a workbook at the time, um, and I just was enthralled by his message, and many of you were too, because that workbook has still remained a classic in this region. Although, unfortunately, we can't ever see Tom because of the, of the sickly wife. He's up in Nevada or someplace, and I haven't seen or heard from him since. Now, there's the, there's the preliminary story. Take me back to two weeks ago when Sylvia, in the, in the course of doing what we always do together, try to bring you the shows of the guests that she'll have at the Freedom of Choice group. And that's when the name of the gentleman first came to my attention that you're going to be hearing today. Um, and at the time I didn't know, but I was to find out probably within 24 hours that and he'll, I'll let him tell his own story. But the part I want to mention that he might not is that another engineer, an engineer, confronted with a medical travesty said, you know what, I don't think so. I'm going to figure this one out myself too. And in a, in a rather a different way, but yet solving the problem. This engineer, I believe, has done it. I believe you need to hear that message, and that's the best preliminary I can give anybody coming up on stage. It really is a pleasure to have him here with us today. You'll be hearing a lot of good things about Mr. Dwayne McCulley in the near future. Dwayne, thank you for coming here. Thank you. And uh, again, I would like to thank uh, Sylvia for uh, tricking me <laughs> into, uh, into coming. She uh, uh, convinced me that I should come to Butler and I should come to Pittsburgh and meet some great people, uh, but I thought it was just her being a little bit over-enthusiastic. Um, but I met some great people up in Butler last week, and today I've met some more great people, so I consider myself blessed to, to have met many of you. Um, one of the questions that I'm always asked um, is, uh, Dwight, how, how, how did you beat diabetes? And uh, <laughs> there's three reasons. Number one is God. People don't like talking about God, but you can't leave God out of the equation. Number two is my mother, and if you, if you knew my mother, you'd understand. And number three is my daughter. And I guess the fourth reason, if I listen to Dr. Courtney, I guess my engineering background probably had something to do with this as well. And so today I'm going to try um, to take an eight-hour workshop <laughs> and try to hit some highlights during the next uh, uh, 30 minutes or so and maybe leave some time for some questions and answers. The original presentation that I developed several months ago was basically a slide presentation. And my daughter said, Dad, your slides are boring. You need some music. And I couldn't think of any music that would be appropriate <laughs> for uh, talking about diabetes. And, but the Superman theme uh, fits very well because part of my protocol addresses this, the Super Meal program. And so we're going to discuss some aspects 
uh, relative to that program, some of the biomarkers, and also, uh, again, the biology of the, the disease, diabetes. But before I get started, let me, let me just try to recap my story. In uh, March of 2002, I went into a diabetic coma. I was diagnosed with a specific condition known as a non-contotic hyperglycemic hyperosomolar coma. Now, <laughs> uh, when I came out of the coma, the doctor said, uh, Dwayne, we got some good news and we got some bad news. The good news is that you're alive. The bad news is ooh, we've got to remove your legs. So I don't know if anyone here has ever been in a coma, but when you come out of a coma, you don't really un realize that you were in a coma. And when the doctor said remove the legs, I thought he meant, oh, move my legs to the other side of the bed. <laughs> and he said, no, Dwayne, remove. And uh, my daughter said, you mean cut off his legs? <laughs> uh, my daughter had flown in from Pittsburgh. And I said, cut off the legs? And the doctor said, yeah. And we'll save $250 if we, you know, we don't like to say cut or amputate. We like to say remove. And so I'm still a little groggy. And I said, OK, $250, I'll save $250. Is that per leg or is that for, <laughs> is that for both legs? <laughs> and my daughter is screaming, Dad, it doesn't matter how much it costs. You're not going to remove my father's legs. Um, part of the uh, protocol, drug protocol that they put me on, uh, because my blood glucose level had spiked at 1,337. And uh, I didn't know what that meant, but I could tell by the look on the doctor's face that it wasn't good. So they put me on a protocol of uh, insulin, 60 units a day, of uh, Lantus and Humalog. Uh, they put me on Coumadin because I was struggling with uh, deep vein thrombosis and I two, had two major blood clots so there was a possibility of a pulmonary embolism. I also had hypertriglyceridema which is um, no disrespect meant to the medical profession but they come up with some fancy names for a lot of these diseases. Uh, hypertriglyceridema is basically you have too much fat in your blood. Well, I had been diagnosed with diabetes, which means you have too much glucose in your blood. So I had a combination of too much fat and too much glucose. So try to imagine taking a, 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 a beverage, Kool-Aid, and you add a bunch of sugar to it. It gets very syrupy. Uh, throw in some animal fat, stir it up. That's what my blood was like. And uh, so they had to put me on a Coumadin to try to break down the blood clots, to try to thin out my blood. And they put me on Lipitor because my cholesterol also was off the charts. Um, <laughs> uh, it didn't work. <laughs> I was alive, but I wasn't getting any better. So they sent me home. <laughs> Yeah, they said, well, uh, good luck. <laughs> um, but luckily, my daughter had decided um, to take off some time from work. And she had purchased all of the blood glucose equipment and set up my lab in the house so I could begin testing my, my blood glucose and collecting information. Because she knows I love that stuff. And, um, uh, the doctor said, Dwayne, you need to test your blood glucose three to four times a day. Um, but I didn't have anything else to do. So I want everybody to know, it's not because I was that smart as an engineer. I just decided that um, I needed something to do um, because my, my daughter was bossing me around. Um, <laughs> And I think she enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> she was telling me what to eat, what not to eat. And I couldn't argue with her because, again, I was uh, very fatigued. Uh, 
My legs hurt. I didn't have a lot.